Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ox Talks. It is Thursday, February 29th, 2024. Yes, unbelievably, we are in the last day of February. March 1st is here tomorrow. Hope you're all having a productive day today. I want to first start out by saying thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. If you like the content and you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button for me. Please hit the thumbs up notifications on these videos, or excuse me, thumbs up button on, the, on these videos because it wakes up the algorithms. Please make sure you have the bell notification activated so you're notified of new content. And most importantly, let's continue to share this material, these stories, this information with everyone that we care about so we can continue to wake people up as to what's going on. We're going to discuss the banking crisis, the uh, regional and mid-sized banking crisis, which is continuing to unfold, and we'll start to sweep this country, I believe, in much great, to much greater extent as we continue on through this year. I want to thank Katrina, my daughter's friend, uh, for making me this uh, nice uh, little contribution to the Ox Talk Studios. I told her I would, uh, I would put it here behind me uh, for the upcoming videos. So thank you, Katrina. Look, I was going to consider doing a very short video today. There wasn't a lot happening. The markets were kind of flat. The the inflation report that came out was uh, didn't contribute too, too much to the swing of the markets. But then this afternoon, I saw this story about the uh, New York Community Bank. It's interesting because three days ago, there was an article published by Yahoo Finance. This is three days ago, February 26th, and obviously it was a little telling. So I'll go back in time, start with that article, and then bring you up to what's happening today with New York Community Bank. It's not good. This says how CRE loans threaten New York Community Bank and other regionals in 2024. Yahoo Finance three days ago. It says Karl Marx once said that, quote, history repeats itself the first time as tragedy the second time as farce, end quote. Marx's assessment of history's cyclical, cyclical nature feels strangely appropriate for describing the state of nation's regional banking system in early 2024. This is 11 months after the demise of Phil Silicon Valley Bank precipitated several of the largest commercial bank failures in U.S. history. Another banking crisis appears to have been narrowly averted earlier this month, but with zero indication that the regional banking system as a whole remains strong enough to withstand a slowly unfolding generational shift around CRE asset values. And again, we've talked about this before, when the commercial real estate values have and been plummeting, continue to plummet. Uh, and the value is, is being lost so fast that the owners of these buildings are simply not able to service the debt or decide not to service the debt and just either default the loan or turn the asset back to the bank or both. And so these banks are carrying huge losses on their books. This is New York Community Bank, NYCB, one of the nation's largest commercial real estate lenders, saw its stock fall 38% in one day on January 31st. Stay tuned, it fell another 15% today. It says, um, after the Queens-based regional bank reported $252 million loss tied to loans on its office and rent regulated properties. Also, NYCB's credit losses in the fourth quarter 2023 in other words, its unrecoverable debts reached a staggering $552 million, up from just $62 million in the third quarter. That is a multiple of six, maybe five. Let's fast forward to today's news. This is from CNBC just a little while ago. It says shares of New York Community Bank fell 14%. It extended trading Thursday after the regional lender announced a leadership change and disclosed issues with its internal controls. The regional bank announced that Alessandro Danello, its executive chairman, is taking on the roles of president and CEO effective immediately. NYCB has been under pressure in the recent months due in part to concerns about its exposure to commercial real estate. Says the bank also announced an amendment 
to its fourth quarter results, adding a disclosure about the internal risk management. Quote, as part of management's assessment of the company's internal controls, management identified material weakness in the company's internal controls related to internal loan review, resulting from ineffective oversight, risk assessment, and monitoring activities, end quote. You would have thought that these institutions would have learned something after SVB. Evidently, they did not. I say they because it's not just New York Community Bank, folks. It's going to be a lot more banks that start coming to the forefront in the coming months that we're going to see are also having this ineffective oversight, ineffective uh, controls, ineffective review processes. It says the company said in the filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Shares of NYCB are down 53% year to date, sparked by its disclosure on January 31st that took a larger than expected charge against potential loan losses. The specter of loan losses reignited, it says, fears about the state of the commercial real estate market and, here we go, regional banks more broadly. Several regional banks failed in 2023 after customers and investors became uneasy about the value and investors became uneasy about the value of the debt on the balance sheets, including Silicon Bank. Interestingly enough, uh, the same story, the same news was also released and reported by Zero Hedge. And Zero Hedge added something to this news story that CNBC did not. And sometimes you have to pull the same news information from different sources and you kind of have to mesh it together to to see really if you're getting the full picture. The only thing, and it's an important thing, and look, it wasn't the appointment of a new CEO that sent the stock sliding. It's this, and I'll read it to you. It says, according to a regulatory filing this evening, NYCB disclosed that identified material weakness in its internal controls related to internal loan review as part of an assessment. That's similar to what the CNBC arguments, or excuse me, article said. But says due to this, the bank will delay its annual report. NYCB has determined that it is unable to file without unreasonable effort or expense its annual report on Form 10K for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2023. So it's not going to file its annual report because things are so bad on its books. It says it's unable to file without an unreasonable effort or expense. So what is this going to show when it does get filed? That, from my perspective, is what caused this stock to drop 15 more cents today. It's not that they're changing CEOs. Uh, it is because they are whatever's going on with that bank's balance sheets and their internal data and their management, it, it, it's truly that bad. So how many NYCBs, how many New York community banks are there out there? I'll tell you, if any of you are, have all of your money in a regional or, or smaller sized bank, again, I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm just saying you might want to consider diversifying, spreading your money uh, throughout more than one account. I wouldn't have it centralized at at all at a mid-sized bank. Look, just because you think you're covered by the FDIC limit, there's a lot of information out there. Those FDIC programs are woefully underfunded, and there's a a lot of data that says that it, it would pay you pennies on the dollar, even for the insured amount. So don't say, well, I'm under 250, so I'm good to go there. I would, I would take a second look at that. This is, may be the beginning of another, another uh, pylon falling, another domino coming down relative to the midsize and the regional bank. So let's keep a, a close watch on this. I'll leave the video relatively short today. That's the biggest thing I wanted to share with you. Like I said, I think gold did it pretty nice today. It put on seven eight dollar gain. Uh, the cryptos again. I saw Bitcoin try to ramp up a bit and then it pulled back. Somebody wrote in my comments to one of the, to yesterday's video that somebody had lost fifty seven thousand dollars that he knew yesterday uh, in in uh, in Bitcoin. So again, 
Uh, if, you're cha if you're chasing something, you need to be very careful. Hedge your bets. Don't put all your eggs in one basket because it can turn the other way very fast. I'll be leaving here pretty quickly uh, to get my workout this afternoon. It's been a busy day. I think I shared this before. It's interesting to me when I, I lived through the, the great financial crisis and my law practice during those years was booming. And it's because there were so many real estate disputes, litigation matters, and so many partnership business disputes. I am seeing that again. I'm getting several calls a day for both uh, real estate disputes and partnership issues where one part is accusing the other partner of, you know, not being honest about the, the funds and the money. And, you know, look, at as, as people get desperate, they do more desperate things. And I'll keep reporting as I see the, 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 the sea change in my business, but I'm seeing these calls pick up again and these cases coming in the door, which is exactly what happened in 2006, 7, 8, and 9, those three or four years. So hope all of you get your steps in today, get some cardio in, go do, go do your walk, get some strength training in. Please be um, very careful and cognizant of the diet and how you are, let's say, making sure that is interwoven into your fitness plan so you can achieve some results and some results that make you more confident, not less confident. With that being said, I'll leave it a little bit under 12 minutes today. Hope all of you have a great rest of your day and evening, and I will talk to all of you tomorrow. Bye.